Chapel Roan won't endorse Kamala Harris. I just woke up and to like people just skewing it even more. Dorsing and voting are completely different. I don't agree with a lot of what is going on with like policies. Like obviously policies of the right, but also some of the policies on the left. That's why I can't endorse. That's why I can't like put my entire name and my entire project behind one. Because there is no way I can I can stand behind some of the left's completely transphobic and completely genocidal views. She's saying like the Democratic Party. There are in huge problems on both. You know what is right and wrong, and so do I. Trump, for real, but some of the shit that has gone down in the Democratic Party that has failed people like me and you. And more so, Palestine. And more so, every marginalized community in the world. So no, I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna settle for what the options that are, are in front of me. And you're not gonna make me feel bad for that. So yeah, I'm voting for Kamala, but I'm not settling for what has been offered because that's questionable. It's questionable that our, our, our actions of our government, the actions of the internet, the actions of you and me, if this is what you are not understanding, you know what? Endorsing someone, if someone is publicly endorsing a political figure, that doesn't even mean that they're going to vote for them. What's really funny about this take is that like Chapel Ron is demonstrating one, I think, sound judgment on the matter. It's ironic because it's something that I experience on a daily basis by annoying people. And I think that a lot of the criticism is just like liberals, Zionists themselves, who try to couch their criticism towards her with like lesser evil voting and like aesthetic posturing. But the real reasons why they're upset is because they can't say that they hate that she is pro-Palestine. That's I think what it is. I'm sure there's like plenty of liberals who are automatically like blue no matter who people. Like there are plenty of people who are blue no matter who people who are pro-Palestinian, you know, to a degree. But they're still team players and they've been conditioned into churning out this like why the f won't you say you're gonna vote for kamala harris and like swing loudly and proudly for her you f but beyond that i think a big part of it is definitely from a lot of uh oh, yeah this is I, I i agree with this i like to take this opportunity to point out that a lot of people leading the hate against chapel are zionists the reason they're attacking her is because she used her platform to speak up about palestine this is a very dangerous targeted hate campaign watermelon isis as soon as i see watermelon isis i know for a moment fact that that is a fake account watermelon ice doesn't care about gaza or palestinians they just hate jews this is what the cowardly watermelons for palestine should have been doing i've been at this point with the pro-palestine movement since december of last year when those protests ran up a gathering of black community leaders and punched one of our mothers in the face glad to see everyone's waking up to this finally this is a federal agent okay that person was and there are definitely a lot of uh, examples of such things as well i'm tired of artists like chapel Ron profiting off of queer and drag culture and then refusing to do the bare minimum when it comes to standing up for lgbtq rights what has hamas done for lgbtq people in palestine we don't govern palestine why should america's votes b vote based on how hamas treats palestinian lgbtq people the left's ability to not comprehend basic political skills and expecting a presidential candidate to not condemn supporters of a terrorist group must be studied pro-palestinian demonstrators there i'm sorry but there's no defending this Guaranteed this guy uses Zionist as a slur. Noah Schnapp isn't a bad person and wishing death upon him isn't okay. Most Americans are pro-Israel. He had to say that. Apparently the Uyghur genocide and sending arms to Israel are equally bad now. Biden isn't weak on Israel. He's just not overreacting like someone like you would. Chaperone is an embarrassment to lesbians because we support Israel in this house. Like a lot of the resentment towards Chaperone saying like, I'm not comfortable full-blown endorsing Kamala Harris because of her positions, undying loyalty and commitment to continuing Israel's genocide. My point is a lot of people are masquerading as people who are like genuinely concerned about Chapel Rohn's statements about the Democratic Party. But I think personally that they are, I didn't even get to the other side of the conversation. The first point I'm making is that a lot of people are couching their like classic harm reduction takes about the Democratic Party when it's 
when in fact they're just mad that she's saying that I uh, that she's uncomfortable endorsing a candidate when she's like voluntarily participating in the genocide of Palestinians, which is a perfectly reasonable and normal take to have. The second sentiment that I would like to express here is that she is basically repeating something that like the overwhelming majority of under 30 year olds, sure, they might not be Twitter chirpers with like a decent amount of followers on Twitter invested in the outcome of the Democratic Party because they fancy themselves to be Democratic Party mouthpieces or operatives. If you've ever interacted with someone under the age of 30, you know that this is precisely how they also feel. And this is not the first election, nor it will be the last election where the underage, uh, the under 30 demographic feels this way about the party when the party does not even communicate or choose to communicate anything that is like functionally helpful for the under 30 demographic of voters. It's not like the Democratic Party has presented a solution to the problems that they perceive, the problems that they're experiencing. This attitude is actually quite commonplace. So I don't even know how. I don't really fully understand how people are yelling at her over this at all. And I'm not gonna let this narrative of like me not it playing both sides. No, 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 this is not me playing both sides. This is me questioning both sides because this is what we have in front of us. So if you look at, look at my statement and you're still like, she's just playing both sides. Like she doesn't wanna, no. You're not getting it. I don't know. Isn't like 80% of the Democrat position good for young people to be fair? No. What the f are you talking about? Just stop asking this question and start telling me what you think is like good for young people. Okay. I'm critiquing both sides because they're both so f up. Voting is all we have right now in the system. And so I encourage it yet again. Vote for who in your mind is the best option for what we have right now. Because it's all we can do. And I hope this makes it clear that no, I'm not picking the sides of what we- No, they don't care. They don't care. They do not care. They're going to literally relentlessly yelling at you and saying a vote for not Kamala is a vote for Trump. You guys honestly do not deserve to win ever again. Twice her age, purposely recording yourself in front of all your degrees to talk down to her for expressing completely valid concerns is exactly why no one under 30 wants to vote for the Democrats anymore. Let's see what this uh, snarky liberal video looks like, but hey, let, let's finish this first. We have right now. Yes, one's obviously better than the other, but Jesus Christ, I hope you don't settle for what we have and put your name behind someone that you don't fully, fully trust. Yeah, I mean, it makes total sense, dude. Like, endorsement is different than, like, going out and voting for someone anyway. But beyond that, like, if you want someone's vote or their endorsement, you have to earn it. This is the basis of democracy, okay? That is what the democratic process is supposed to be about. How ridiculous that the Democratic Party has completely lost this attitude. Like, they've, they've just, like... And I'm not even talking about the party, actually. I'm talking about the f voters, like the rider dyers for the Dems. They act like that is a utterly incomprehensible position. They act like you are against the very notion of democracy if you don't immediately subscribe to one party over the other. This does not mean the other party is good. The reality of the matter is, if a vote not for Kamala Harris is a vote for Trump, a vote not for Trump is a vote for Kamala Harris. If someone tells you that, oh, you don't want to vote for Kamala Harris, well, you're voting for Trump then, and it's like, no, I'm not voting for Trump, then I guess I'm uh, voting for Kamala Harris. Shut the up. Meanwhile, changes occur regardless, and it is completely outside of our control, like the top of the hour ad break avoidance fee. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. Let's see how the uh, liberals are reacting to this. I'm sure very normally. Woke up. Well, good morning. Obviously, the policies of the right. All right, we're on the same page on that one. But also, some of the policies on the left. Oh, now you lost me. That's why I can't, like, Put my entire name and my entire project behind one. I mean, that's kind of how voting works right now in America. So, yeah, I'm voting for Kamala. All right, we're back on the same page. It's pronounced Kamala, though. You know what? Endorsing someone, if someone is publicly endorsing a political figure, that doesn't even mean that they're going to vote for them. I mean, what's, what's the strategy behind that? I mean, after the primaries. I don't, I don't think that's a thing. I don't think there's any benefit to a corporation or person endorsing a candidate in a general election and not actually doing it. So you're losing me again.
No, no, no. This is not me playing both sides. Sure about that? I'm critiquing both sides because they're both so f up. Yep, sounds like you're playing both sides. Voting is all we have right now in the system. I mean, that kind of is the system of democracy. But yeah, there's a lot more you could do in between elections. I think he's a doctor. <laughs> yeah, he is a doctor in being a f dick. We know your MAGA hat is off screen. I mean, it literally is. Hold on. What now, liberals? What now? The truth is out. I encourage it yet again. Vote for who, in your mind, is the best option for what we have right now. Yeah, Kamala Harris is definitely our best option. Okay, I can't watch the rest of this. This guy's so f***ing annoying. 2020 hat, get with the times. That's when things were great, brother. I wear this hat. Let me tell you why I wear this hat. I wear this hat because he won the 2020 election, and I'm not afraid to say it. He won the 2020 election, okay? He did. He f did. He stole my president, the real president. This guy's next video is chef's kiss, critical thinking. Yeah, he's just saying what he doesn't have. By the way, Ethel Kane is such a f G, holy sh Ethel Kane defends Chapel Rowan against people demanding that she endorse Kamala Harris. Y'all cannot be stupid enough to scream Israel all year, rightfully so, and then go happily vote for Kamala. Like, she didn't just get up on that debate stage and say Israel has a right to blow the entire Levant to smithereens. Do not piss me off. Didn't Ethel Kane say something like, I don't even want to repeat it because it might actually get me a visit from, you know, federal law enforcement. I think some of it is that she's not being specific in her critics of Kamala and the liberals take advantage of that. No, 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 she is. She said there isn't sufficient pro-LGBTQ messaging or legislation on the Democratic Party agenda, and also Democrats are doing genocide in Palestine. Those are pretty solid foundations. At Joe Biden, bitch. She's incredible, dude. What the f I'm gonna follow her. Yo, what the f And then she activated that asset, and the asset was like, instructions unclear, must Trump. <laughs> Maybe he didn't understand or, or didn't see the second part. I believe Ryan Ruth was a big Ethel Kane fan. <laughs> Another banger. Oh, this was funny. Yeah. Ethel Kane says she will rally the Amish against Drake if he speaks on Megan Thee Stallion again, following the circle local controversy. Speak on Megan again and I will rally the Amish. That's a threat or maybe a promise. 